So let's talk a little bit about order, format, and style um, before we move on to the potential categories. So ordering, we've already talked about this a little bit, but you want to order your selected categories to reflect relevance to both who, what kind of artistic domain you're working in. And what I mean by that is depending on the type of artist you are, there's certain categories that are what I call your bread and butter category. Um, and I'm going to point these out as we go. But for instance, your performance history, if you are an actor or a musician, um, your exhibition list, if you're an artist, your publication list, if you're a writer, there are certain categories that are sort of primary, have sort of a more weight to them. And it's what people really expect to see on the first page um, because that's the that's bread and butter. Um, so you, you want to consider that. Um, so even if you don't have a lot of exhibitions under your belt already, it, maybe you only have two um, or even maybe you don't have any at all yet. If you don't have any at all yet, you're not going to put it on there at all. But if you have two, you still might want to have it first because that's what people want to see. So you're also going to consider um, impressiveness. So how impressive is your exhibition list versus your awards list or your um, related work experience list? Um, maybe one of those things is more impressive. And so that would then maybe edit the order of, of um, the categories in your CV or resume. Now within each category, you would order entries in reverse chronological order. So starting with the most recent entry first. Uh, I will talk about formatting more and I'll show you lots of examples, but I love for the year to be the most prominent thing on the page. And one of the best ways to do that is to left justify your years um, on the left side of the page so that they sort of act as bullet points for each entry. And I'll show you what this looks like here in a minute because it's kind of hard to envision. Um, this is not a hard and fast rule. This is a personal preference. You can write justify the years and that's perfectly fine. But I find, especially with most of the people I've worked with through ARP, if I were looking at a resume and I was looking at um, a performance ex uh, performance history list or a exhibition list, it'd be really easy for me to be like, okay, this is their solo exhibitions. Okay, they had one in 2019, 2017, 2013. And immediately just see right off the bat what you've done and not even really need to look at the details even if I didn't want to. Of course they probably will, but I wouldn't need to if I didn't want to. I'd just be like, okay, that's all there is. Um, and then move on to the next section and do the same thing. Um, so I think that's really helpful. And especially if you've been active, very active recently, that's something that you'd want to foreground. Now, if you're unsure if that is right for you, I'm happy to talk talk with you about it one-on-one. Um, -on -one. Maybe it's not something you want to foreground. And there are cases where people are like, no, I don't want to foreground the dates. And I'm like, okay, that's that's totally justified. Um, but I'm happy to talk to you about that too. And we'll see examples of both with the dates in different places. So um, that's just my own personal preference. There are some exceptions to the reverse chronological order as well. So um, if there are some categories that have no dates, if that's the case, then you'd put it in alphabetical order. In your education section, if you have one, the education category, um, you would, if you have multiple um, institutions that you're listing, it's not necessarily going to be in reverse chronological order because the institutions from which you obtained degrees would come first. And then the ones that you maybe just attended or maybe it was a seminar or something and it didn't end in a degree would come next. Um, so those are the two exceptions to that ordering rule. Besides that, always in reverse chronological order. All right, formatting. Um, everything about formatting is to make it skimmable. And so it needs to be very simple and straightforward. There needs to be space between each entry. And I'm gonna show you an example that is not like that <laughs> here in a second. The first example I have doesn't do it. <laughs> so I'll um, make sure to point that out to you. But between each entry, I would like at least a half a line or six points of line spacing, um, which if we have time, maybe we can, I can show y'all um, if anyone has a question on like how to format, I'm happy to to work either one-on-one -on -one or in the Q&A of this, of this um, section on like actually how to do some of the formatting things that I'm talking about. Um, but you can find that under line spacing. At least a six point line space between each entry is great um, and it makes it uh, more easily skimmable. Don't use anything smaller than 11 point font, even if you're restricted to a one page resume, um, 12 is preferred. 
And then for descriptions, you can go as small as 10.5 if you want, although you can certainly leave everything the same size. You wanna pick a standard, very legible typeface, and you can use bolding, underline, underlining, italics, et cetera, to make certain bits of info stand out. Um, so that again, easily skimmable. The only place where you can be a little bit creative, and I mean a little bit creative, is in your header, which has your contact, your name and contact information in it. You can make your name big, and we'll talk about this here again in a minute. I prefer your name to be a presence on the page, just as if you would be a presence in the room if you were getting an interview. Um, make a statement with your name. It can also be in a different font and color if you want, or it can just be in black too. That's perfectly fine. You're gonna include page numbers beginning on page two. So not on the first page, but every page after that should be numbered. Avoid a colorful background, avoid images, um, unless you're a dramatic artist, in which case headshots are often um, needed. Um, for actors, you usually have your headshot on the back of your one page resume um, or any colorful or too many fonts. So avoid anything you know, that's too visually distracting. All right, so here's a couple of examples. I'm saying all these things to you, um, like keep it boring, keep it boring, <laughs> keep it boring, basically. Um, and you know, I'm lecturing about visuals to artists, which you know is a little ironic. But um, when you Google artist resume or put it in Pinterest, as I have here, you're going to get what I would can be con considered to be misled. Okay, there's a lot of different opinions out there, but I would consider this to be misled um, to, to make something that's very beautiful. These are very beautiful examples. Um, so here, I'll zoom in on, on one here. Um, this is great, but imagine when you're, when you're doing, when you're looking at something like this, or you're getting recommended to make something that's more creative, if you were on a search committee or if you were on a grant committee, um, and you have a stack of 100 CVs or resumes, um, and you get ones that look like this, and you get ones that look like this, there's a certain degree, you get to a point where, where you think a lot of this creativity is masking perceived insufficiency. Um, so someone might be like, oh, I don't have enough to fill a page, so I'm going to be a little bit creative, right? Um, so just keep that in mind. It may not even be true. You just might want to be creative, but that does kind of begin to be the perception I think that, that committees might have when they're looking through a lot of these things. Um, so again, this first example could use more white space between the entries, but besides that, you can see what I was talking about with using the years as bullet points left justified on the page. I think that looks really nice. Um, it's very standard. Um, and so it's, it's something that you don't really need to think about, you can just do it this way and it's a great way to do it. Um, and again, there's exceptions to that. And if you hate it and you wanna put it on the right, that is perfectly fine, but you know, I'm, I'm partial to this. And we'll look at this, this CV again later on too. Um, we'll come back to that. All right, wording style. Like I said, you don't want paragraphs in your CV or resume. You want this to be skimmable. You're not even gonna have complete sentences. You're gonna have phrases that are bullet pointed. Include descriptions only as needed. We already talked about that. Keep your phrases concise and as specific as possible. And I'll show you an example here in a minute. Avoid pronouns altogether. So you're not gonna say, I was in charge of blah, 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 blah. Instead you would say, led blah, 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 blah. Okay, so you're just gonna take out the first part of the sentence, the noun part of the sentence altogether. You're gonna start each bullet point phrase with an action verb. Present tense if you're still doing that job, past tense if it's something you did in the past. So here's an exam example of all these things together. Instead of writing general music ed instruction as a description or even taught general music classes, try something like created lesson plans to introduce duple meter, minor mode, and syncopation pattern. That's level of specificity. It's, it's not too long, right? But it shows not only gives a better picture of what you actually did, but also kind of shows that you cared about it a little bit more. It gives the, it gives the um, impression of a little bit more passion um, behind just taught some classes. You know? It gives a little bit more like, I really care about this. This is what I did. 
Um, okay. And then you want to also cater your wording, just like you're catering your categories, the ordering of your categories, et cetera, to the position or the grant that you're applying for. In order to do that, you're going to really look at the announcement or opening or call that you that made you notice the job in the first place or, or the grant in the first place or whatever. And you're going to look at the, the keywords that stick out to you and try to sprinkle those throughout your resume and even your cover letter um, to make it. And you might think that that's pandering, but it's not. It actually communicates to the committee that you have looked into their grant or their job in particular, and you aren't just sending out the same documents to everybody. Um, it shows that you care about them. And also it shows that you're a good fit for the job. So don't, I know sometimes it feels icky to be like, oh, it feels a little pandery, but it really is, um, it really is something that they want to see.